Welcome to Understanding Conscious Cryptids with me, Kat Hansen. I am bringing you this show in an attempt to educate you about the forgotten creatures and beings that exist alongside of us on this amazing planet that we call home. Many of these hidden beings are elusive and highly intelligent. Our ancient ancestors of North and South America knew of and understood these beings quite well. Many people are coming into contact with these elusive creatures and they do not have any knowledge or understanding of what it is they are seeing and interacting with. Seeing and interacting this with. oftentimes leaves these individuals fearful and confused. Seeing and interacting it's my intention to shed some light and share knowledge through this series. Seeing and interacting I'm going to help alleviate that fear and confusion. It is time for the light to shine through the darkness. If you are interested in sharing your encounter, Contact me directly at cathanson at yahoo.com. And I hope you enjoy the show. Hi everyone. Welcome to Understanding Conscious Cryptids. Today's discussion is going to be about chupacabras. Yeah, I know. You've all heard me say I can't stand them. And I call them Chupa my blah blahs. Well, that's kind of not true. I called them Chupa my blah blahs for a reason. The Chupa my blah blahs are the ones that the army, in particular, has created by uh, genetic research, uh, hybridization. And those are the ones, in particular, that you're going to run into in the forests. They've escaped, they've been let loose. Personally, my own personal opinion on them is that they've been let loose to see how the human population interacts with them. They do have some of the capabilities that the parent uh, original has, but they do not have all of the capabilities because they were cloned and hybridized with uh, earth creatures so we're looking at something here that's not a pure chupacabra okay so that accounts one for the smaller size okay as you're going through the video you're going to see an original chupacabra it was filmed in Chile and that was the one that was on the news and you're going to notice that it is highly muscular and extremely large okay that looks nothing like uh, what we call a chupacabra a goat sucker these have been cloned and when you clone something for some reason it comes out uh, smaller and squatter not sure why scientists aren't sure why they're still working on it but the first set of clone that comes out is always smaller and squatter uh, its figures its uh, figure in general is that way its legs are stubbier its eyes are closer its ears are smaller everything is just stubbier um, which leads me into another topic for another day but these guys that you see in our forests look nothing like the parent and as you're going through you're going to notice and you're going to go oh my god well maybe we should be kind of thankful that they don't look like the original pattern you know because it's kind of scary when you look at the original and then you look at what we have so do we thank the army for that okay it's one of those Al Bundy hey thanks army you know type of thing um, I myself I think these guys account for a lot of the missing children in the forests. Um, I know they account for a lot of missing hikers. Um, no, I'm not saying all, I'm saying some. Okay. These guys will eat what they can get their hands on, okay? And you have to realize that our government when they 
hybridize something, they are looking for fast results. So they're going to choose whatever they can get their hands on uh, material-wise, genetic material-wise to clone it with. That's compatible, okay? So think um, Jurassic Park here, okay? They're gonna figure out whatever they can use. And it doesn't matter, I mean, they're really not looking for something that's friendly because this is a bioweapon, okay? That's the ultimate goal of using the genetic material was to make a bioweapon out of this creature. So the thought behind it is that if it's mean, vicious, um, dangerous, and can get the, done what the army needs to have done in a fast, efficient way, then they're going to use it. Okay? So when you come across these things in the forest, sure, they don't look like the original pattern. They look somewhat like the original pattern. They've got some characteristics, but these guys are still dangerous. Okay? And yeah, that's why I call them Chupama Blah Blah, because to me, the name is ridiculous, and pretty much it's blah, 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 blah. It's all an explanation that we've all heard 10,000 times before from our government, which we know they're using as a cover-up. We're never going to get the truth on these things, whether we want them or not. Now, that being said, they do have some of the capabilities. Not every one of them, not every batch of these things has the same capabilities. Some of them have orange eyes, some of them have yellow eyes, some of them have red eyes. And yes, I've heard that there are some that have the black purple eyes. Okay, each of these has different abilities. Some, they're just like, you know, like your kids, okay? Your kids are a mix of, of both parents, but some kids are good at math, some kids excel at PE, you know, each kid is different. Well, that's what these mixes are, okay? Some have the original gifts, abilities of the parents, and some don't. So some can open a portal and step into that uh, dimension. Some cannot. Uh, some can open portals and step through time and only travel from one point A on this earth to one point B on this earth. Okay. And I'm telling you now, that's why our army our military is having such a hell of a time trying to track these things because they're aware that they have the ability to do this but what they are not able to do is to stop them to control them and to make them do exactly what they need them to do it's one of those fun characteristics that uh, they don't like but they need because it makes for a better soldier so are these things militaristic yeah can they be weaponized and used yes are they dangerous could be sort of kind of maybe um, do I advise contact no is it one of those things where I say, run away screaming? <laughs> yes, because how many of you go for a walk in the woods fully armed? You know, I get messages from you every day telling me, Cat, I don't even take a pocket knife into the woods. Okay, well, you don't take a pocket knife into the woods and something happens and you stumble across one of these things. You know, what's going to happen? I can't tell you. I can't tell you whether you're going to be hurt or whether it's just going to look at you and, and walk the other way. I can't tell you. So my suggestion is, like I say, with these dangerous things, run screaming in the other direction. <laughs> you know, as fast and far as you can. 
Um, and if it happens to be in the direction of your home where you have a weapon, more power to you, you know. Um, and the next time you go walking in the woods, make sure that you're armed. Because certain things in our forests have to be approached logically with the thought and intent of your safety. Safety is first and foremost. And with that, I would advise everyone to please always remember safety first when approaching Chupamavalapas. So, that'll be the end of this lesson for today. And I will go ahead and say please come tomorrow for the next lesson. See you then.